back with our second video on EEG basics. Today I want to focus on how to tell if somebody is asleep or awake and if they're asleep what stage of sleep they're on based on the EEG alone. Take a look at this graph here. On the x-axis we have the different uh, hours of sleep and on the y-axis we have different stages. So up on the top we have wakefulness, uh, we have rapid eye movements or REM or REM and then we have the three non-REM stages. So that's N1, N2, and N3. So two remarks here. In the world of clinical neurophysiology, when we say that somebody is drowsy, it's the same thing as saying that they're on N1 stage sleep. The other remark is that in the past, we used to have two uh, stages here that were N3 and N4 but the recent terminology clumped them together into N3. See, we start off as being awake, we go to bed, and we fall asleep. We usually don't go through REM um, the first time around, and if we do, it's typically associated with sleep disorders, but we do on the other cycles. So typically, I'm awake, um, I go to N1, N2, N3, and then I cycle through that multiple times. I hit REM here up on the peaks a few times throughout the night, and then I wake up at the end. How can we tell somebody's awake looking at the EEG alone? There are a few things we need to remember and that are really helpful in making that determination. So I summarize them up here in the top. If we see eye blinks, obviously somebody is uh, awake. Um, if there's muscle artifact, it's likely that they're moving around and contracting muscles here and there, so they're, they're awake. We have the posterior dominant rhythm uh, which also means that they're awake, relaxed, but still awake. And we have the anterior-posterior uh, gradient that's also common to the uh, awake state. But we can see, especially on the more anterior leads here, these guys up on the top, that it's blacker, if you will. So it's, it's more black. And that means that there are more waves in there, and they're faster. So that represents uh, muscle activity for, for the most part. So uh, a way to know if they're moving around is that they're, the waves are really, really fast. And we typically say that they're shorter than 20 microseconds. So if they're that fast and the duration is that short, it means they must be coming from muscle and not the brain. So that's how we can tell. And then uh, we'll, we'll see some examples but it's really easy for the most part to identify those because they're usually you know very large and, and and tall and big waves that are very fast um, so you get used to uh, uh, identifying them the other one uh, finding here that it's important to go over are uh, eye blinks so this is this is, has to be memorized so if you look at the globe here the eyeball the cornea is positive and the retina is negative. So that's a dipole right there. Bear here with me. Uh, it's it's kind of cool to understand why this happens. If we imagine that um, there's a, a head here or a scalp and then the eye globe up, up here, uh, what channel or actually what electrode do you think would be closer to the eye from, uh, from the cephalic channels? So that would be the frontopolar ones. So that would be either FP1 on the left side or FP2 on the right side. So as you guys know, when we close our eyes, and you can you can test it out at home, uh, either on yourself or one of your friends, uh, if you if we, when we close our eyelids, your eyeballs, our eyeballs go up, and that's actually called the Bell's phenomenon, which is kind of cool. So if you close your eyes, you close your eyelids, your eyeball, so your cornea will go up and your retina will go down. The closest electrode to, to the eyeball that we just learned, that's FP2 or FP1, depending on the side, will pick up positive activity. And as we always reiterate, everything that goes up on the EEG is negative, everything that goes down is positive. So if FP2 picks up positive activity because the, the eyeball is going up and the cornea is close to FP2, it's gonna go down on the EEG. And that's called uh, an artifact, an eye blink artifact. An, an artifact on EEG is everything that shows up on the EEG that doesn't come from the, the brain. So this is an eye blink artifact. So now we know how it looks like and why it looks like that. The other two hints are 
number one, they're mostly on the frontal leads, so the interior part of the brain, and it's just because the eyeballs are closer to the interior and they're placed in the interior portion of the skull. And they're on both sides, usually, because we have two eyes. So you're gonna see uh, these waves on the interior leads and on both sides, and they will look like this. And sometimes it's tricky to know, but if you pull up the video that comes with the EEG, you can uh, you can use your cursor to go over these exact uh, second or uh, a third of a second, and you see on the video if the patient is blinking, and if the, the patient is blinking, you know it's an eye blink artifact. So we know how to identify eye blinks, we know what muscle artifact looks like, and now we need to talk about these two guys here, the posterior dominant rhythm and the interior posterior gradient. Um, the next slide is gonna focus on the PDR. Um, so now let's look, talk a little bit about the interior posterior gradient. As the name implies, there's a gradient, so there's a difference in something uh, if you look at the interior leads compared to the posterior leads. That's the first uh, clue there. So what, what's different? And this is actually a nice example here. If you can see here on the interior leads, so up on the top of the page, compared to the posterior leads, so the bottom of the page, uh, what differences can you, can you identify? So yeah, I agree with you. Uh, it's slower on, at the back of the head, and it's faster as we go towards the interior leads. So that's the, that's the first one. So it's faster, in the anterior portion, and it's slower in the posterior portion. And the second one has to do with the voltage, or, or the amplitude, or the height of the waves. So at the back, they're taller, so the amplitude is greater, whereas up in the front, they're shorter. Just summarizing, the anterior posterior gradient is common to the awake state, and there are two things uh, we need to remember as far as the gradient. So the interior portion is faster but shorter and the posterior aspects and leads and at the back of the head it's slower but it's taller. Now let's talk about the posterior dominant rhythm or PDR also known as alpha rhythm. The name helps us with the first characteristic of this rhythm. So it's posterior. Um, so as you can see on this example, it's the this rhythm is seen on the posterior leads. So it's this. We're going to see other examples afterwards, but this is a this is a nice example of a PDR uh, at the back of the head. So it's posterior. So that's that's the number one. The number two is that it sits in the alpha range, which we learned um, ranges from eight to twelve or thirteen hertz. So that's the second aspect of it. Sometimes it's lower than that, especially when people are sick or uh, in the elderly, and that may or may not be abnormal. But as for the most part, it, it should be in the alpha range. And uh, we can actually count them here and see if this person's uh, PDR is normal. So here we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 hertz. So that, that fits. Um, and uh, just a reminder, uh, a second is in between two contiguous vertical lines. So if we have 10 cycles in one second, we have the frequency of 10 hertz. And it's under the alpha range or within the alpha range, so that fits. The third thing, uh, which is very important, and I learned that with my mentor and friend, Dr. Jay Gavala, during residency, um, is that it's reactive to eye opening and closure. And what does, what does that mean? It means that when somebody has their eyes opened, you should not see PDR. And when they close their eyes, they, the PDR pops up. Now, the last thing is that it's important to remember that PDR is not present in, in kids equally as it is in adults. So at around three months of age, a normal PDR is not within the alpha range as in adults. It's actually sitting at the three hertz uh, uh, frequency. When kids are one year of age, it's around six hertz. When they're three years, about eight hertz. In nine and 10 years, 
about nine hertz. And after that, it becomes the same as for adults. So this is a nice uh, uh, summary here to, to memorize. Let's look at a real life example now on an EEG page and try to understand if the patient is awake or asleep and why so. But this is a bipolar montage and as we learned it means it compares one electrode to its neighboring electrode and we have the left uh, uh, on the top here and it's left actually and then right and then left again and right again and then midline at the bottom. So this is this changes between centers. So you need to make sure that you take a look at this before you make an interpretation interpretation because it, it changes and it varies and there's no right or wrong. It's just what you're used to and what your institution is used to. But anyway, this is a page of an EEG of a patient who's awake. And how can I support that idea? And we're gonna use what we just learned. Number one. Um, these waves here that are within these uh, red circle are eye blinks. So as we learn, uh, they're, they're, they're bilateral, so they're on the left side, and they're on the right side, and left and right, because we have two eyes, and so they're, they're symmetric. They're in the anterior leads, so, they're, so it's hard to see, but here is the frontal polar so fp2 will be right here fp1 will be up here and there's a wave right there uh, fp1 again here fp2 here so they're in the anterior leads because they're closer to to the eyeballs so that's an eye blink right there we can see some muscle so we can see especially around here the more black ish activity meaning that um the they're really fast uh waveforms that come from uh, muscle inside of brain, so that's a sign of somebody being awake, and we see PDR, um, and that's kind of cool to, to identify as well. So one, there's there's a lot of examples of PDR on this page here, but let's take a look at these guys. Let's see if it fits our PDR definition. So number one, is it posterior? Yeah. So let's take a look at this one here first. It is posterior. This is at O2. Um, so it is, it is posterior, so that fits. Let's see the frequency. So if we count within one second, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight and a half. So it's within the alpha range, so it fits. And does it go away when somebody opens their eyes? And it does. So if you can see here, this is an eye opening and uh, the PDR goes away. And then when they close their eyes here, uh, it comes back. So it fits the three criteria for PDR. This is a posterior dominant rhythm or, or PDR. And just for us to have a, a, a visual clue, um, the PDR, as we just learned, comes from, or it can be better seen at the occipital leads. So the O2 and O2 and O1 um, electrodes, and that fits with our, with our example here as well. This is what I had for the second video. Hopefully it'll be easier to identify if somebody is awake uh, during the EEG study. Uh, next videos, we're gonna focus on how to identify drowsiness or N1 stage sleep, N2, N3, and REM. So stay tuned, thank you so much, and I see you next time.